So what happens when a world-renowned auto manufacturer known for their market-dominating economy cars tries to go up against the greats of the sports car scene with their own little two-seater? It may seem to be a recipe for disaster, but if you know anything about cars, you know the name MR2. But how did it come to be such a legend? Well, let's have a look. When someone says mid-engined, you likely jump to ideas of expensive exotics from the likes of Ferrari, which is fair enough, as they are pretty cool. However, there were attempts in Europe in the 1960s and 70s to create this formula on a more affordable budget for wide-scale marketability. However, being that these more affordable cars can be represented by offerings such as the Porsche 914 and the Fiat X19, you can pretty quickly deduce that they were never really popular on a mass market level. The Japanese, however, even at this point, were pretty undeniably the kings of mass market automobile production. Surely they, of all countries, could produce a mid-engine sports car that actually sold in great amounts. Well, that seems to be exactly what Toyota was thinking in 1976 when they would create a concept affectionately nicknamed MIDI. A mid-engine sports car designed to be cheap and, unlike many of its European counterparts, economic and reliable. However, the story would, like many others at this time, be hindered by, you guessed it, the oil crisis. It wouldn't be until 1979 in which the company would pick up this project again, this time with the intention of putting it into full production. Akio Yoshida would lead the design process, coming up with the revolutionary idea of mounting the engine transversely in the middle. This basic idea formed the groundwork for everything else, and the car was slowly put together until Toyota was able to show off this concept in 1981, called the SAX. Extensive testing was done in both Japan and the United States, with the Willow Springs Raceway being its most common proving ground, with ex-Formula 1 driver Dan Gurney at the wheel. By 1983, the design had advanced significantly into this thing, looking very similar to the final production model, this time named the SV3. And with just a few changes from this concept, Toyota would launch their mid-engine motor, now known as the MR2, onto the Japanese market in 1984. Officially, MR2 stands for Midship Runabout Two-Seater, but some other sources claim it means things like Mid-Engined Rear-Wheel Drive Two-Seater. Either way, the iconic badge will be Toyota's third sporty model, or the third of the three brothers, joining the Celica and the Supra, though those two badges would not be fully separated until 1986. The MR2 would acquire critical claim upon its launch, being affordable, reliable, economical, and best of all, fun. It was notable for being able to feature a revolutionary design and building standards, yet not step over budget. For example, while the MR2 was fitted with McPherson struts for its suspension, a fairly basic and less performance orientated option, it did save on critically needed space. On the other end of the scale were the four disc brakes fitted to each of its wheels, a fairly new and radical concept that the MR2 introduced. The designers knew what it needed to be successful, and didn't inhibit it with cheap parts, nor did they overstep into the territory of unattainably expensive parts either. Perhaps the car's pièce de résistance, though, was its engine, the iconic 4A GE unit, lifted straight out of the Hachi Roku. Most importantly for the MR2, though, was the fact that it was notably more compact than equivalent powerhouses, again saving on critical passenger room. The naturally aspirated 1.6-litre twin-cam engine could push out 128 horsepower in its best configuration. Combined with the car's weight of just 977 kilograms, the MR2 would shoot from 0 to 60 in just 8.7 seconds, which, for the mid-1980s, was pretty nippy, beating out rivals like the aforementioned X19 and the four-cylinder Pontiac Fiero. In 1986, it got even better. The MR2 would be fitted with the 4 GZE, a supercharged version of the original engine with a new intercooler. Though sticking with the MR2's theme of being budget friendly, it was designed in such a way that the supercharger would disconnect when not needed, saving on fuel. It now made 145 horsepower, and these improvements saw 0 to 60 times go as low as 6.5 seconds. Ooh. 
This original run of the MR2, or the W10 generation, would accumulate numerous awards over its 5 year production run. Hell, with suspension supposedly worked on by the legends over at Lotus, that comes as no surprise. The MR2 provided pure drivability on a budget, and Toyota now had a real monster on its hands. In fact, in 1984, Toyota would work on a rally spec version of the MR2, an intimidating looking thing called the 222D, intended to race in the Group S category. It was now four wheel drive, shared few components with the original MR2, and reportedly made upwards of 600 horsepower. However, when Group B and by proxy Group S was banned, Toyota was forced to abandon the project and instead raced the Celica GT4 in the Group A category, where they would later find success. Quickly following on from the W10 success, Toyota would debut the second gen MR2, or the W20, in 1989, or 1990 for some markets. It was bigger, it was sleeker, and it was heavier. Now that may not sound so great, but with a more spacious, more luxurious interior, a more sophisticated suspension setup, and a few new engines on the larger side, it more than made up for it. And boy, were there a lot of specs available. Most engines were in the 2 litre range, though some would also see the addition of a little thing called a turbo. The best of the bunch was the Japanese market GTS model, featuring a turbocharged powerhouse making 218 horsepower, a significant step up. With this increase in both quality and power, the MR2 would go on to be known as the poor man's Ferrari, and when you put one next to a 348, you can kinda see where that comes from. This may seem like an insult, but being that the MR2 was now facing off against the likes of GTRs and M3s, I'd say it's more of a quirky nickname. But it wasn't all sunshine and roses. That aforementioned improved suspension did come with a problem. Snap oversteer. Essentially, if the throttle is let up during a turn, the centre of weight would shift forward, causing the rear of the car to slide out. The car would then suddenly snap in the other direction, and you can probably guess the rest. Now while this is a potential problem for all mid-engine cars, the second gen MR2 was a particularly potent case. In 1993, Toyota responded to this by fiddling with the suspension. While the oversteer problem was remedied a bit, many would say that this came at the cost of a less raw driving feel. You can never win with these people. Still, the MR2 saw some pretty considerable motorsporting outings during this time. It was raced in the Japanese Grand Touring Car Championship, where the car championed the GT300 class in both 1998 and 1999. There was a land speed version built which recorded runs of over 200 miles per hour, and a version even saw use in Le Mans, though in the heavily modified guise. In 1998, Toyota Racing Development, or TRD, began offering the TRD 2000 GT, a wide body kit which could be fitted to a customer's MR2 to replicate the race car of the same name. The engine would also see some upgrades, with sources saying that some TRD MR2s left the factory with over 500 horsepower to play with. After 10 years of production and an immense amount of success, the W20's follow-up, the W30, would launch in 1999. And right off the bat, there was a big change. The MR2 had now solely become a convertible, being marketed under the name Spider. This was a big turn-off for a lot of MR2 fans, though if you were Japanese, you would now call it the MRS. Power was now down to just 138 horsepower from a smaller 1.8 litre unit. However, with curb weight of less than a tonne, it didn't feel like a downgrade. The raw, pure drivability of the original MR2 seemed to have made a comeback here. And while many critics praised this setup, with comparisons being drawn to cars such as the Porsche Boxster, a pretty big compliment for a humble little Toyota, it seemed that this latest reincarnation of Toyota's sports car simply wasn't catching on like its predecessors. Changing times and priorities both inside the company and out meant that the MR2 was becoming less and less favourable, and sales slowly declined throughout the 2000s. The W30 sold over 7,000 units in 1999, but by 2007 this had dropped significantly to under 1,000. 
MR2 production ended that same year after over two decades, and with the Super and Celica dying out in 2002 and 2006 respectively, the MR2 will be the last of Toyota's three brothers, as company management was now set on producing more mass market cars across the board. The final variant of the MR2, the TF300, was a limited production finale run for the UK market of just 300 units, featuring a turbocharged engine making 182 horsepower called the TTE Turbo. A fitting send off, I think. While this is the apparent end of the MR2's story, there's hope for the future yet. In the last decade, Toyota has slowly begun building up a range of more sporty cars again, starting with the GT86 in 2013, and now having expanded to the popular Gazoo racing brand with cars like the GR Yaris and the GR Corolla. Toyota themselves have also mentioned the idea of bringing back the three brothers. With the GT86 at the bottom and the recently reintroduced Super at the top, this could be a perfect opportunity for a next generation MR2 to slot nicely in the middle. But who can really say with times changing so rapidly? Like I'd be able to afford one anyway. And there it is, the Toyota MR2. For a car that started out as an experiment in affordable, economical mid-engine motoring, the car has certainly evolved to deserve the insane fan following that it's got. The fact that it was so effortlessly able to combine innate drivability, a lower cost, some surprisingly nippy stats and some undeniably sleek appearances is a real testament to Toyota's attention to detail and quality. And being that the MR2 is probably one of, if not the single most reliable mid-engine sports cars in history, it's a legacy that likely won't be surpassed anytime soon. Poor man's Ferrari my ass. Thank you so much for watching, with a very special thanks to Ben Wright and Brum Brum Brin, who are very generously donating at the highest tier on my Patreon. Just £1 a month is an amazing help, and I also have socials linked in the description below. Again, thank you for watching, and take care.